that's been how my mornings go. Okay, you know, right when I turn the camera on and shake water all over the place, look at that tail. He has the most ridiculous tail. Ridiculously long. I'm having trouble getting going this morning. So I sat down over here on the glider and Toby wanted to jump up and have Snuggies. It's so calming. Having the little snuggle time with Toby it started to make me very sleepy. Sitting over here in the sun, it's a nice, crisp, cool morning. By cool, I mean it was like 39 degrees when I came out here. I think we're up into the mid 40s by now, so that's a little bit better. But then the sun starts to hit and it just, oh, it feels so nice. You sweetheart, Toby. You gonna say hi? Yeah, okay. That was nice of you, Toby. It's a big deal for the old man to jump up here. It's kind of high for him. I'm surprised he's able to do it. it makes me happy. Hey, hey, what's up, Cardinal friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. As you can see, just hanging outside with the dogs, trying to enjoy the nice weather. We have about a nearly a 10 day straight of just rain coming up. So I figured this would be a good time to come out here and do the garden tour. I was hoping to wait a few more days because I had some more things that I wanted to get done before doing the tour. If you watched last week's video, last weekend's video, last Saturday's video, that is, then uh, I, you saw I did a lot of cleanup. Lots and lots and lots of cleanup out here. And I wanted to do a few more things before the garden tour, but that's okay. Here we are. Things are still looking good. The maple trees are dropping their stuff all over the place. That's been fun. I haven't even bothered trying to blow it off the patio yet. And it's like, yeah, it's fine. It's going to keep coming down over the next few days. And, and I'll get most of it scooped up and then it'll come down some more. And you know, you know how it goes. It's just the trees. The maple trees, one there, and there's one over here. And then there's two big birch trees up here in the neighbor's yard. And they just dump garbage everywhere for about three to six weeks. It's like there's a whole different series. Of Anyways, this is a garden tour. Let's talk about the plants. Look at that, Toby. You're just so stinking cute and precious, Toby. What an angel. I was over here trying to find his ball, Turbo's ball, because it looked like it was under there, but I don't know where it went. Where'd it go? Oh, Turbo. How did you... He was harassing me. Like, I needed to get the ball out from under there. It wasn't there. It's going to be very difficult to walk away from this to go talk about the plants, but let's do this. Be right back, Toby. Love you, baby. April Garden Tour. There normally isn't a ton to report with the April Garden Tour because not a lot goes on this time of year. There's been some progress with the laurels. They're starting to flower and look just absolutely beautiful. I love when these go into bloom. In about a week or so, there will just be a wall of these little white spires coming off of everything and the bees. There are bees that just cover these, just swarms of them. And they smell pretty nice too. It's a light, sweet smell that I very much enjoy. The pedicets, those have done an awful lot since the last garden tour. Generally in March, they just are flowering. There's not a lot going on with them. And then uh, right around mid-April, they start to push up their foliage. You can see their old flower stalks right here, how they spike up above everything. I should cut those out. I'm not really going to bother with that, probably because I was thinking I'm probably going to do some rearranging of this berm this year. Spent a lot of time in the last video that I did where I was out here cleaning things up, trying to get all the junk off the patio. That's why things are sort of splayed out and sort of erratic over here because I haven't put things back together yet because I'm trying to figure out how I want to rearrange things. But I was able to get these nice lines back, which I talked about a lot in that video. I kept talking about how I wanted to see the lines and the curves in the patio. Things had become overgrown. There was soil that had eroded down and there were just pots and clutter everywhere. It was a mess. And the thing with these pedicets, pedicets japonicus, that's what these are in here, also called butter burrs, is that they get quite large and they spread like crazy. I planted six here a few years ago and they now go from, oh, where's, there's one all the way down here and they just, they go all the way over and up that hill. Just, they're just starting to go up that hill anyways. So what I was thinking, and I talked about this last year, is that I think it would be nice to have just a fun little patch of impatience in here for a lot of color. And since these have finally matured enough to the point that they are growing up that hill, I don't really feel like I would feel bad if I were to go ahead and pull the ones that are in the front of this berm area here. I didn't get around to doing it last year, and that was really just because they, the pedicets had gotten so large by the time I was going to do it that I didn't really see it as a task that I could take on and 
that it, it just didn't make sense basically by the time I was ready to do it. But there are so many of them growing up towards the upper edge of this berm here up higher that I could clear out the ones that are in the front and have all that color from the impatiens in the front and then have the pretty green foliage just above them at the top of that berm. Is that making any sense? I think I would like to do that. I was on the fence about it just because when these pedicets are in their full glory, they'll be easily three to four times the size here in about a month or two. It really is beautiful, but since they're down there, I'll still have that. <laughs> so I'll still be able to see it and appreciate those big, beautiful leaves and the variegation. I love the variegation on them because it reflects the light at nighttime. There's a coach light up here. Is that what this thing's called? Is that a coach light? It's a light. It's a, a, a big light. And it brightens the area up at nighttime. That's what I'm planning on with this area is to get some color in there, leave the pedicets at the upper half of the berm, or really the upper probably third area, and then let the front be for annuals and maybe some perennials. I'm going to have to watch the sun and think about that a little bit because I also think it would be really pretty to have a hedge, not really a hedge, but to have a drift of the hardy begonias in here. I think that would look really nice, but height-wise with the pedicets, when these are about twice their size, they're going to be about the same height, and I think that it might look kind of, might look a little bit off. Ah, got to think on that one. whole point there is that they're looking great, loving the color, loving how they're coming in, really filling in. Every year they'll just continue to fill in even more nicely, and here's a better look at what I was talking about over here, how you can see how this area right here they filled in underneath the mimosa tree and I will let them go up this hill from like right about there and over they can naturalize and the ones that grow out over here really the lawnmower seems to take care of them. You, know, you mow the lawn every single week that's generally enough to control them and they lift up very very easily so even though they do spread and they're, they, have it, they have an invasive nature to them in that regard not through seed at least not where I live but just as far as how quickly they can take over they do pull up very, very quickly. And I haven't noticed pulling them up to cause them to grow even more insanely or spread in any kind of dramatic way. No action out of the mimosa tree yet. It's a little bit early for that. And this spring hasn't been very warm, like not very warm at all. Heck, it really wasn't until a few days ago that we had some temperatures that got into the 80s. It went from being like 30 degrees and very cold to 86 and 87, which was nice, and then it cooled off again. And now it's looking like things are going to start warming up with lows in the 50s, highs in the 70s, and probably some 80s. So hopefully in the next week, I can get the tropicals moved out here. That would be very nice. Nearly a month earlier than I was able to do it last year. Last year was horribly cold. The hydrangea trees. I'm trying to remember to talk about the things that have changed since the last garden tour. So these were originally in smaller blue pots over here on this wall. See that like little square pot right there? Is it even really visible? You can kind of see it. Those are in those tiny pots on each side of the steps. And it just wasn't working anymore. There's not quite enough light over there, at least not on this side of the steps. There's more sun on one side than on the other. And I had these new pots that I wanted to put over there. Aren't they beautiful? Oh, they're so beautiful. I've wanted those pots for such a long time. I think they look spectacular in that spot. But the hydrangea trees weren't going to work in there. For one, I don't want to put anything in these tall containers. They're 36 inches tall. I don't want anything in them that's going to be tall enough that the wind can knock them over. I'll be weighing them down and probably putting an anchor plate or something like that underneath them just to be safe. But I don't want anything in those that's tall enough to blow them over. So the hydrangea trees weren't going to stay there for all those reasons. Multitude of reasons. And then I moved them into these pots right here, which do normally have palm trees in them. But I just, I thought that this would look really nice. Last year, I picked up some hydrangea trees for a family member who had just moved into their first home. And for like a week or so, I had them sitting over here on each side of these steps until I was able to take them over and get them potted up at their house. And I just absolutely loved how it looked. It definitely wasn't a tropical look to it. Although the, the paniculates do somewhat give me like crepe myrtle vibes, which isn't necessarily tropical, but it's very, I don't know, Southern. I still am happy with how that's going to look. I think that that's going to look spectacular. They've gotten their prone and they're starting to look better. This one over here may have some deadness in it. I can't tell. I feel like it should be. Yeah. Yeah. There's some stuff in there I'm going to have to cut out. So one of these is <laughs> going to be more bare than the other, but that's okay. That was the other reason that it needed to get done was because the pots they were in with perennials and like little trees or larger shrubs, it's hard to go past about three years with them in a container before you have to pull them out 
upgrade them, get the old soil out because it gets really mucky. It's just, they do better in the ground after a certain period of time. So these will be okay in these containers for a couple more years and then they will go into the ground, either here or somewhere else. But that's likely why there's some die off on this one because it was just so overdue to get moved into a larger container. Not much has changed over here in this bed except that what's, you know, been re-edged and got the drainage gravel put in place. Have a Ruby Spice Clethra right here. Did a video on that last summer. It's starting to wake up finally. I was a little bit worried about that when it was taking its time. And then all of the oh so easy Italian ice roses. They're looking pretty good. One of them I think might be dead. Okay. Well, not fully dead, but it's not looking great. So that one needs a big cleanup and a big prune. But four of the five are looking pretty good. Down here is where a whole bunch of gingers were planted last year. Zingiber myoga. No action from those yet, which isn't that unusual. I, normally I didn't see action of those until like mid to late May when I'd grown them in the past, but it still makes me nervous because I planted them so late at such a small size. Who knows what'll happen there? But like I said, we also haven't had a lot of warm temperatures to wake them up. And the spot's very shady. There's a hosta here. What is this? Time Traveler? I believe it's one that has some really cool variegation on it. So I am happy to see that that survived its first winter. And it's looking okay at Washingtonia. Yeah, I don't, I don't if it, Do we have to talk about it? I'm pretty sure it's dead. We had temperatures that got down to around zero degrees last winter. So not likely that that's alive. Either way, it's going to go. The people who I bored, it sounds so weird to say. The company, I have lots of big palm trees, if you don't know, they uh, will take this out and I'm going to put my Alexander palm, which normally goes over there. I'm going to put it right there and it'll stay in the pot and be somewhat above ground, but I think that'll be an okay spot for it because it should have some support from the wind and it makes more sense because it can just go in and out of there every year and go back to the greenhouse. I don't have to worry about it getting too big and dying. That's nice about the Alexanders is they do get tall but they reach a certain size where their growth really stalls out and slows and mine has hit that point where it's not growing super, super fast anymore. So I don't have to worry about it not fitting into the greenhouse like what happened with this one. That was unfortunate, but we talked about that in the last garden tour. I'm not doing any more palm trees that grow super fast or get really, really big. Are you supposed to be up there? Excuse you. You're not supposed to be up there. Get out of there. Look at me all confused like you don't know what I'm talking about. And then as soon as I say get out of there, you go, oh yeah. Some bamboo shoots starting to come up. That's a really big relief because I had talked, I'm pretty sure we talked about this. There's one, two, three, four, at least five shoots coming up here. This is a black bamboo turbo. Excuse you, get out of there. Everybody's watching you. Be, be a good boy. <laughs> Anyways, this is a black bamboo that was originally planted all the way down here and it had spread and I over chopped it. Bamboo is fairly easy to control when the shoots are fresh and you can just cut them right up. I overdid it one year and just about completely killed the thing. So that's why I left this little clump right here, which is in the very front of the garden bed. It's not an ideal spot for the bamboo, but I was like, if I keep digging and chopping on this thing, it's going to die. So I let it sit here. It's been about two years and finally starting to see some action out of it. So maybe next year that will reestablish itself enough for me to dig up the entire clump and put it somewhere more appropriate. Cause right in the front of the garden bed, that just, that doesn't make any sense. Bananas starting to wake up. They did start to wake up like a month ago and then it got cold. April was fairly chilly. I feel like there were more warm days in March than there were in April. So they've just kind of been sitting here. <laughs> Haven't really done much, but they'll take off here pretty soon. As of yesterday, little bit of a growth shooting up there from the Colochesia bikini teenies, which is always a relief. This is that time of year where I spend a lot of time just waiting for the things that are only marginally hardy to pop up. Those bikini teenies have pretty much always come back though, but I don't know, it still makes me nervous. The daffodils are done blooming. Have a dog cage back there that I had wrapped around them to keep the dog from running around in them, but I think I can put that away. He isn't messing with the plants so much. He likes to run around the plants as you've seen, he isn't like getting into and causing a lot of trouble. So I could probably, I think it's safe to go ahead and put that away. Stable miners, no protection this winter, hence why they look the way they look. But considering, I think they look all right. Browned out dead foliage, but again, it got down to around zero degrees multiple times. We had ice and snow. It was a fairly bad winter. Not the worst we've had, but it was pretty cold. Not a big deal in a few weeks. Those will start putting out new fronds and they'll look as good as new come probably, I'd say, July late June, July, somewhere in there. Oh, I was excited to see this. Okay, almost fell over trying to get this shot. The banana cannas, had a big clump of them planted over here last year. Those 
survive the winter. The last few winters, not this past winter, but the ones prior to that, for like the last four years have been so bad that most of my cannas weren't coming back, which was unusual because I'd always been able to grow cannas out here without any problem. I usually didn't even have to mulch them. So I'm happy to see that some of them are coming back. Actually, a lot of them. There's a whole bunch in there underneath that lace vine, which I have been digging and pulling and hitting it with dead weed brew, only the spots that are far away from the plants. And it's just, oh, that's a vine that's a pain to get rid of. And there's another canna popping up over there. The gingers have only given a few spikes. You can kind of see them over there. It's a few more. No, you really can't even see them. They're still so small and hidden back there, but there are some ginger shoots coming up from the Hidichium flaming torches. I haven't seen anything coming up from the others yet. I don't usually expect to see anything out of those usually until like mid-May anyways, but this spot back here is fairly toasty. It wasn't until we had those two days in the 80s last week that out of nowhere they were just like, boom, hello. Thank you for the heat. They shot right up out of the ground once that heat came in. Crinum lily starting to flush out nice and green love that big broad glossy foliage same with the bananas which don't have the broad glossy foliage yet right now they're just sticks but they'll look pretty cool here in a few weeks needle palm sitting there needle palming ostrich ferns those weren't around in the last garden tour those hadn't come up yet Look at they've gotten really big they're absolutely massive this year to just love the soft foliage on an ostrich fern it adds a great texture to the garden it's airy Somewhat ethereal, but still gives that lushness that I desire when I'm out here. And there's a big one right here, big one over there. I mean, they're ostrich ferns. They spread, so they're kind of all over the place. A couple more sable miners. Those got planted last year, so I should have done more to protect them, but I didn't. And they're okay. They don't look great, but they survived. And that's generally the goal with trying to overwinter palms and colder zones. I'm in 6A, 6B, so turbo. That dog just ran down there and knocked half the daisies off that table and started swinging that glider around with Toby on up. He doesn't look, I'll be right back. Okay, dogs are inside. <laughs> Turbo is a little bit wound up this morning. So I think that's about it for over here. The daffodils are coming up. They look nothing like the pictures from when I ordered them, which is disappointing, but seem to be the trend and the theme from every single bulb I ordered from that company. I don't remember which one it was, but whichever company it was, I'm not ordering from them ever again. <laughs> it's not just these. There's some alliums over here that are not accurate to what they should be. And then all those daffodils that were down there. Not those look nothing like the descriptions. Still pretty plants. I still like them. The peach trees, aren't they fun? The sun's right in my eyes. Can we even see these? Well, hopefully we can. I filled these up with the frizzle sizzle lemon berry pansies. That was the name on those. Almost just dropped my tripod. Some pretty white osteospermums that have a gorgeous purple center on them. There's also some lettuce in these, which is surprisingly done. Basically nothing, but normally those do a good amount of growing for me this time of year, but eh, not this year. And then there were daffodils in there. They're done. They're done doing their thing. And the peach trees, these are bonfire peach trees. They were beautiful while they were flowering, but they are absolutely full of tiny little peaches. Aren't they just adorable? Can't wait till those get bigger. I know this many of them won't make it to maturity. That's gonna be so cute when those have those fun yellow fuzzy, yellow and orange fruits on them. And the foliage. I mean, that's one of the things I liked about these bonfire peach trees. Pardon everything being backlit. Like I said, it's just with the weather. I can't really wait for a better day to film the video, which is what I would normally do is wait for some overcast. Anyways, they're cute. I love them. I enjoy having them around. The peach trees, they're not staying here. I talked about that when I planted those up a few weeks ago. They're, it's probably late March, probably. So this, I think, may have been in the March garden tour. But these will both be moved to the driveway actually on each side of the gate that's over there. I think that's going to be a better spot for them and I want to do tropicals in these two pots because I already have the hydrangea trees down there. So I think it would be nice to have the tropicals over here. Ideally, I'd have something that matches in all four pots, but there's just a total difference in sun on each end. And I kind of like being able to play around with a couple of pots that I can really pack with annuals and have more fun with color than having the perennials and the others. It's, it's nice to be able to mix it up a little bit. Even if I lose some of the consistency in the garden, uh, it's worth it for me to be able to play around with them and have fun. And like I said, since there's so much more sun down here than there is over there, and that side of the steps over there, is very, very, very shady. It just, it's really hard to have tropical arrangements that have a lot of color in them that will stay looking consistent in all four pots with the difference in the sunlight. Oh, and then over here, 
a lot has changed over here. That was, I didn't really make the point. I think it's because I feel a little bit bad talking about something back to back with a prior video for people who watched the last video. But my main objective for the month of April was to really just wipe the slate clean. I had years of debris and clutter built up out here that just needed to go. Old pottery and just junk everywhere. So this spot right here was a total disaster and it's looking much, much, much better now. Things are cleaned up all the way down to the end of the wall there so I can see the drainage path that's in there. It's taken a while to get it cleaned up down here. I keep going in with a little rake and with a blower and doing my best to get the stuff out so that I can top dress that with some fresh gravel because that still looks pretty messy and nasty, but I'm happy to at least just have that nice clean line back and to be able to see that wall. I think that it looks much, much, much better. Still have a pot over here that I'm going to be repotting one of my mule palms into this. That's why it's sitting here and I have some annuals and things sitting in there and there's a bro part of the broken pot. I got a lot of pots to go together. Look at this azalea. Isn't that beautiful? I think this is called carnation. It's one of the encore azaleas. One of my favorite encore azaleas because look at those flowers. Hopefully you can even see them. The sun. Oh, the sun today. Anyways, this was a planter that originally had all perennials in there and most of them are still in there. There was a magnolia in there that didn't do very well one winter and it died, but the azalea is still there. Maybe I can use my body to shield this. Is that better? Yeah. Look at Hukura. Get out of there. I believe this is Dolce Cinnamon Gumdrop? Maybe Silver Gumdrop? One of those? Sorry, been a few years. Hard to remember, but it has gorgeous, glossy, silvery foliage. Absolutely beautiful. So this and the azalea right above it. I'm probably going to work into the landscape up here in this area. That's all new. That wasn't around in the last garden tour. All of these euonymus were planted up behind that laurel hedge and it just didn't make sense to have them there anymore. And I needed something here for some screening and just for some privacy, something evergreen and free. So I dug them up, moved them over here. They've all transplanted just fine. They've been in the ground for a few weeks now and I haven't had any issues with them. There's a little bit of yellowing on a few leaves in this one down here at the end, but that's about it. They seem to have taken to the transplant just fine. Got them in the ground while things were still nice and cool. Not one of my favorite shrubs, but I had them. So I figured why not use them? I thought they would be a good fit for this location because I only want them to grow up to be about the height of the fence. That's about how big those get around here. I don't usually see them any taller than about five to six feet. That'll fill in and add some color. They may revert back to being all green, which I'm totally fine with. I think they still look beautiful when they're all green. So what's not to love about nice fresh green foliage. It's another fun thing with this time of year. The new growth that comes out of the spruce tree. It's so pretty. I love looking at that. I started to talk about one thing and then just moved on to another. Welcome to my brain. The cleanup. So <laughs> that's what I was originally talking about. The wall's nice and clean. Have a few pots up here left that I have yet to deal with, but I will get around to it. There are any pots that are left out or pot, Ella. <laughs> any pots that are left out that you see on the patio or pots that I plan on doing something with sometime soon. So that's why those are sitting out. The Japanese maple bonsai. So lush and so pretty. I think I may have missed the mark on its spring prune. Again, that's the problem with the bonsai. It's got to jump right in there and get them on time. I can still do it. Things are still cool enough, but it's best to give them that prune right when their new foliage starts to come out. And, uh, well, clearly I was too late for that. The honeysuckles. So the last time we talked about these, I was talking about putting them up onto obelisks, which I still think would look nice, but I've done some shopping around for obelisk, 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 I don't, whatever. They're pretty pricey. I have a couple of trellises already that I think I could just throw some black paint on and put those over there. Once the vines are over them, it really won't even matter what they look like. And that would provide the same effect. It would add some screening just to kind of hide the other homes a little bit. I think that would look better there. I've been trying to sort of shuffle some ideas around in my head because I don't know if y'all have noticed, but plants this year, oh, ho, ho very expensive and there are a few trees that I'd like to plant and it's it's gonna cost some money so I'm gonna be trying to cut corners wherever I can and not do things like you know spend 250 or 300 dollars on a couple of metal obelisks to put in the yard I don't I just don't think that would be necessary because the vines are gonna cover them so quickly I won't even be able to tell that there's like a beautiful wire structure underneath them yeah I don't think I'm gonna do that oh the buckeye and it's full glory right now has flowers all over it. This thing put on a lot of growth. It's all the way up there. You can barely see it. 
it seems happy here. I had thought about moving it, but the past few years it's been doing really well. Other places that I see them around town are often places where they're getting bright morning light and afternoon shade, and they're big, beautiful trees, like, you know, 15 to 25 feet tall somewhere in there. So I think I'm just, I'm gonna leave it and see how it does. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, and the plant seems happy. So that's where it can stay for right now. This area looks so much better. So clean. I mean, there's junk everywhere from the trees, but decluttered. Came over here to talk about the honeysuckles, didn't even show them to you. There it is, they haven't opened up yet. They're just now starting to bud, or there might be some in there that are starting to open up. These are the major wheeler honeysuckles. They are a very heavy bloomer, and they bloom sporadically throughout the year. Well, spring, summer, and usually early fall. So that's one of my favorite varieties in the color. <laughs> it's gonna be so hard to show you. They remind me of a Gartenmeister fuchsia. They have a kind of tropical color to them. Very pretty, and the pollinators just love them. Ah, the bamboo planters. You can't really see them, because I have a whole bunch of tropicals and things laid out in front of them. These are the yellow bamboos, and they are just now starting to shoot up some new growth. It's very thin and spindly, so kind of hard to notice. It probably won't even really be that noticeable. These did okay through the winter time. The one on the right did much better than the one on the left. We, are, this, we talked about this last time, didn't we? The last garden tour talked about how things did in the winter. Never mind. They're growing and looking pretty good. All of the tropicals that are out here really shouldn't have been out here, but the weather forecast was saying it was going to be like 43. And then I woke up and it was 36. There's a big difference there. Wasn't thrilled about that. Everything that's out here did okay with the exception of this Mandevilla. It did not appreciate that cold. Of course it didn't. It was wet from the rain and then 36 degrees after having just been like 86 degrees. That's a big temperature shift for the plant, but it still has green in it, so it's gonna be okay. Not thrilled that that happened, but I suppose I should stop paying attention to my forecast so much or trusting it. I think from now on, if it's saying things are gonna be below 45 when it comes to delicate tropicals, that I'm just going to assume that they could be off by a good 10 or 15 degrees. I've lost too many plants to trust in the forecast. Well, you see the little hydrangea? That is a little lime punch. I have wanted one of these since Laura at Garden Answers showcased the new smaller paniculatas last summer, and they're really hard to find. I managed to find just one at all the nurseries that I've been to, and I snatched that thing right up. The little lime punch, they, uh, I think, like three feet tall somewhere in there, and then they have a white flower that fades into a reddish pink at the end of the cone. So it's a nice, smaller, more compact paniculata. I'm very excited about it. I was hoping to get five, but I'll settle for one. I had an area where I wanted to put like a row of them around something. I thought it would have looked really pretty, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. I'll take it. That's, you know, how gardening works, right? You can always just transform an entire area in one swoop. Oftentimes we have to build and things take time and that's okay. The Enset Bananas, they didn't skip a beat with the cold, neither did the Caladiums, so that was good. Even with the Caladiums, I think they would have bounced back and been fine, just would have been a setback. Mill Palms, looking pretty good. They're ready for their repot. Once those temperatures are steadily in the upper 50s at night, I'll go ahead and repot them. Windmill Palms are looking okay. They have quite a bit of wind damage on them, but they should push through it and be just fine. And then this was the last area that I tackled for the month. This was a pretty big disaster. This was the only area that I hadn't done a winter cleanup on. The entire rest of the yard I had at least been going through a couple of times between November and the beginning of spring and tried to get leaves and things up. You know, it's a continual thing. You always have to stay on top of it. This spot though, I really hadn't done that with. So that's why all the pots are up here on top of the wall because I've been pulling things out. They're not staying up there. This will all get rearranged here in a week or so when the tropicals come out. Cannot wait, so excited. That's the old pond. Cleaned it out, thought it was clean, dried off, it had dirt on it, so <laughs> need to wash it again. You know, sometimes something will look clean and then it dries and there's still some soil. So that's what's going on there. But that collapses down. I get tossed into a Rubbermaid tote and get put away. I put a potting bench over here in its place. This is a collapsible bamboo bench that was over there where the mess was. I think I showed y'all before. And this is where I put that for right now. It's gonna work, it's fine there. I don't mind it, not a lot of privacy, but I'm thinking about maybe throwing some arbs from here all the way down to like over there. It probably sounds odd because there are those white pines up there. But the thing is with the white pines, every single year except for last year, 
for the last six years, I've lost a pine tree, either to eastern white pine decline or from having really bad storms that push through, and I think it just rattles them enough to disturb the roots that they die. But these are the three that remain over here. They used to be planted all the way down across this wall. There's still one over there. So there's four of them left. Pretty trees, they're native, so it's a good one to have around. I'm not gonna cut them down or anything, it's just I anticipate that they may not be here for all that long. And even if they are the white pines, they tend to get very bare down low. They turn into just like telephone poles with growth on top. Once these put on probably another 15 or so feet, there really won't be any growth down low. And I think that there would actually be plenty of room for a row of arbs that would go from right here down to there. I didn't do that right here because I wasn't sure about the spacing with that spruce tree and there's not as much light. They can go part sun even part shade if they're situated properly, but I just think that it'll be random having like all different evergreens up here, but I mean, that's a garden. Not everything has to be uniform. It's nice to be able to mix it up. So that might be happening this year. I can't say for sure. We will see. I think that's about everything. Pretty sure we're all caught up. There's a new fountain down there. I mean, it's the same fountain, but with a different pot and I put some clear stones on top so you can see the lights at nighttime. But otherwise I think that's everything that happened in the month of April. Got to see the plants, mostly just cleaning the spring. Plant. No, I did those in March. Never mind. Oh, there are the roses over here. Potted these up last summer. I can't remember the names of them. I don't remember. This one was like a something orange hot, pep hot paprika. That's what it is. Hot paprika. Very pretty little, somewhat miniature rose. They have tiny little dainty foliage and a very bright, vibrant orangey to orangey coral flower on them and it's already got some buds on it how exciting and this I, I don't remember it may have been another one of the oh so easy italian ices perhaps <laughs> i guess we'll find out all right that's it hope everybody's doing well comment down below say hi i love talking to everybody what's going on in your gardens looking forward to the month of may gonna be getting all kinds of tropicals out here lots of annuals and just really getting the place brightened up with color and just vibrancy. It's going to be beautiful. Really excited to plant up those blue planters down there. Those ones, oh, that's going to be fun. Yeah, I think in the next seven to 10 days, I'll have the tropicals out here. I move them into the shade and they hang out there for a little while, most of them anyways. So they won't be like out on display where I want them permanently for the summertime, but it's still going to be nice to have them outside, especially just having everything together for watering. That will be really nice. Oh, and a lot of repots. I have a lot of plants that need to be repotted. I have the two mule palms, and then the, I think there's a dracaena that needs to be repotted. A couple of recurvifolia yuccas need to be repotted. Yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch. It's gonna be a fun month. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Ugh, shadows. Bye-bye.